You know, as Annie mentioned, she was raised on barbecue, and I, I had my fair share of it too when, growing up in Texas. But when you think of wine, I got to be honest, barbecue isn't the first thing that I think of, and I'm sure you don't either. But we're going to change that in the next five minutes because Oliver Baggio, the owner of Big Daddy's Barbecue, is here with Gary Smith, who is the chef over there. We welcome both of you gentlemen to the show. How are you? Step Good on this, over this way. Um, let's talk about some barbecue basics, if you will. Sure. Let's because see. Um, when you look out at these, you go, hmm, if you don't know anything about barbecue, you go, hmm, yeah, those are burnt. They not are, so much, right? They are not. They are slow cooked for uh, anywhere from 12 to 14 hours. And the reason why it looks dark on the outside is that is what is called the bark. And it's low and slow, and that's where all the flavor is with the rub. Low and slow. Okay, so what are the different types Let's of meat that we have? Th this is? This is brisket. Okay. Um, we have a, our brontosaurus rib here, which is a Mac Daddy rib. And this one? And this is tri-tip. This is more like a steak. Okay. Uh, we cook it to medium rare. And what, 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 if this is a... This, this is, is our brontosaurus know, rib, it, so it's a beef rib. It's a beef rib, okay. Yeah, it's a big beef rib. Them are some big ribs yeah. right there. I mean, I'll show you. <laughs> yeah, let's cut it open. Okay, so out at Big Daddy's Barbecue, you specialize in what type of barbecue? Because it seems like it's, there's regional flavors, wouldn't you agree? There are very oh regional flavors for barbecue, gosh. and uh, that's, that's a big rib. <laughs> for, uh, what that's do the kind of rib is. you're going to get on your plate. Oh, my goodness. Is those are not some little, uh, no. those little you know, pork ribs. No, that's great. Wow, my gosh. Okay, so back to the flavors and what you kind of specialize in. Mostly southern barbecue. It's because it's smoked, but it's not uh, uh, not heavily vinegary. It's very, uh, um, if there was such a thing as blended barbecue, that uh -huh. would be what we do. It has a lot of Texas flavors to it, a lot of southern flavors okay, because it is smoked. Uh, it, it really, it's got something for everybody. It's, it, the food's fantastic. Gary's going to cut open our brisket here, which, as you can see on the outside, is heavily barked. And then when you get inside, I mean, it is just unbelievably juicy. It's delicious. And as you can see there, you got oh juice flowing out of it. Now, okay, so what is the secret to really getting those juices to um, stay in the cut of meat whenever you're, you're preparing it and cooking it for that long? Make sure Gary does it. <laughs> so, uh, Gary, what are, what are the tips? What can we draw from, from you know, looking at a slab of, of beef like this well, that we could do at home? What you want to do is make sure you buy quality meat because that's where it starts. Mm -hmm. And how and, do you know if it's quality, though? Um, talk to your local butcher. Um, they'll give you tips on what is a good, a good piece of meat as, as opposed to something that's a little bit more, you know, not that great. Um, well, there again, the idea is low and slow. So you want your temperature down to like 250, 200. You're going to smoke this for like 14 hours. Put a nice rub on it with some... Have a little bit of sugar, sugar in it, brown mm -hmm. sugar, so it caramelizes. You ever use you beer your on your stuff? Because I know that my father used to put beer like in his. Or I have, his but or we do not use beer in in our rub uh, at at our restaurant. Well, it works then because yeah. what's that? It does? <laughs> Your dad put beer in it. Oh. Growing up. <laughs> Explains a lot. Exactly. <laughs> I started early and often. Um, so the wine then would, would pair well because we're not going to get any of those like real subtle flavors of the, of the beer. Well, you know, the wine, surprisingly, is, uh, and I think what you said was, was, was accurate. A lot of people don't think about wine with barbecue. But really and truly, barbecue's got tremendously complex flavors, a lot of spice. It is protein, so it's so like you, eating in a steakhouse. Do, do you drink it with the red? We do. Okay. Drinking it with the red is great, and particularly the Paso Robles wines, that region of California is sometimes misunderstood in that it's not really Napa Valley. It's Central Coast, which is halfway between San Francisco and Los Angeles. It's very hot there. So uh, it produces a lot of bold flavors, um, heavy, uh, bigger wines, which stand up great to the spice of barbecue, and they're absolutely delicious, and they're good. Uh, uh, it's, it's a great pair. Well, let's throw some cheese on top of this thing. Let's do the magic of TV, and I'm going to whip out some good old, I mean, the, the one side that's going to be the absolute crowd pleaser, nobody is going to complain, is a little bit of uh, mac and cheese. I think I need another And we cup. put tons of cheese on it. We just load it up. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> is that enough cheese for you? Yeah. <laughs> My goodness. Well, thank some you Some delicious so mac and much. cheese. Thank you so much. We certainly appreciate it. Now, if we want to take advantage of, oh my goodness, how would you like a little bit of meat with your mac and cheese? <laughs> it looks absolutely delish. If we would love to get down and, and visit you guys, tell us the easiest way to get to you. 101 Shea Boulevard. We're right, right there. Can't, uh, can't miss it. Just on the east side of the freeway. And we can have, we can taste. Oh, west side of the freeway, sorry. West side of the freeway. And we can taste the wines. 
the Paso, Paso Robles wines at just about any time as well. Absolutely. Okay. Sure do. Gentlemen, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. You are really good at what you do, for sure. <laughs> thank you. I want to also let you know that the Paso Robles wine dinner is being held at Rancho Pino on Tuesday, February 8th. For more information, go ahead and make your reservations at the phone number right there on your screen.